Hey, hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. And if this is your first time here, hey, stick around, learn about some 2XO if you haven't heard of this brand before. And if you had, hey, learn about this new batch. See if you like the vibe. Come back later if you like the style and the reviews. But I am quite excited to get into a brand new Dixon Deadman Blend 2 times Oak. That's the 2XO. This one is batch two. It's the Innkeeper's Blend. Man, this is a two-oaked bourbon that you should stick around and hear a bit more about this one. I am excited to do, through, do a taste through again. Woo! Let's kick off the show. Got poured out here. So we have the 2XO Batch 2, the Innkeeper's Blend from Dixon Deadman. If you don't know who Dixon Deadman is, you might know his prior brand, which was Kentucky Owl. Sold that brand off, spun it off, created a new brand, 2XO. And in this case, the 2XO stands for two times oak. So we are talking about double oaked products here within these blends. So something that he's blending and then finishing in another barrel. This is the second batch in the series. The first batch is called the Phoenix Blend. Depending how this goes, I really want to compare the two. So I want to get through the review portion of the Innkeeper's Blend. Hopefully I don't talk too long. And then let's get into the comparison because that's the one thing I haven't done yet is compared batch one to batch two. But ugh, initial impression here, I think batch two is going to take this one. I'm excited. So let's get into the tasting notes. We're going to break down the nose. We're going to break down the palate. And then we're going to get into the final scores. Thank you for joining me today, whiskey friends. Cheers. All right, into the nose we go. So... Initial impression on this one, it does come across as older, not double oak to me. So I do think if I was getting this blind, I might not say it's finished off the nose. I might say it's like eight to nine years old, if that makes sense. There is a little bit of a toasted coconut, like a shaved toasted coconut sensation that maybe would give in to the fact that it's double oaked because sometimes I either get toasted marshmallow or toasted coconut. But I don't think so. I would think it's just an older, an older bourbon. Other notes off the nose. Um, I get a little tobacco off of this. I might even define it as a, a light roast espresso, but mostly tobacco leaning. There's a little bit of chocolate on the nose, but it's not a dark chocolate. I'd, I'd even say white chocolate slight pecan so a little bit of nuttiness i'd attribute it to a pecan a slight apple though i do find maybe a slight cherry as well there's even a bit of cotton candiness to it which i try to break apart from that cherry Man, the last note I'll throw out there, um, you know, I, I feel like I throw this one out quite a bit. It's the elephant ears. It's like the fried carnival dough, but not that powdered sugar smell or sensation that I sometimes get accompanying that. Just the straight dough. Ah, I, mean, I feel like I could sit here and pick apart fruits more and more. That's the weird thing here. There is something weird about this nose. Um, I didn't say it off the top, actually. It's 104 proof. 
and a hundred dollars. So that is going to come into play later. And with it being 104 proof, the nose part of it, it's so interesting to me. It's this, it's this, it's nuanced, but it's not in your face with the flavors. So it's like you can pick apart the flavors nonstop, but then the volume on all the flavors is only at like a seven or an eight. So it's like you dig and you dig and you dig, but nothing's shouting at you. You actually got to work for it, but then the work is rewarded. That's just a weird combination. So it's, it's a nuanced nose, if that makes sense. All right, let's get to the taste. I think that's all I have for the tasting notes, or for the nosing notes at least. Cheers, everybody. Concentrating first on the, oh gosh, that's so good. Concentrating first on the front palate, the initial flavors that I'm getting. Um, very creamy mouthfeel. So it does hold up from a mouthfeel perspective, even though it's only 104 proof. Oh, so nice and creamy. It also comes off initially bright. I would describe the initial flavors as like a powdered sugar, or I might even transition it completely into an Oreo cream. So take the chocolate of the Oreo away, just eat the center of it, and something along those lines. All right, let's go for another taste. Hmm. I've been having a little difficulty with this one, picking it apart. Initially, there is... A fruit sensation, but I try to pick it apart. I can't centralize it on one given fruit. I think there's even some melon in there. It almost is like a a smoothie at this point. Like there's a bunch of fruits in there, and I can't quite distinguish when one ends and one begins. And that's how it initially starts out. But then it transitions to a flavor that like wrecks me. And I would equate it to a devil dog cake. So if you go to the local grocery store, or local bakery, sometimes they have those devil dog cakes, if you know what I'm talking about. And it's going to be that layer of chocolate cake with the cream in the middle, another layer of chocolate cake, some more icing, and then a cherry on top. Now, when I say it's a devil dog cake, I'm not saying I'm breaking down all those flavors and combining it. Because sometimes you see me just kind of like break down all the flavors and then put them together and describe them. Uh uh-uh. No, it's just straight that. It's just all those things at once. It's like taking a bite of that simultaneously, not individually. So that's really interesting. Even the cherry on top's there. And I'm going to go in for another sip, but oh, there is a there's a moment where the taste is so good between mid palate to the finish. Oh, I love it. All right, another taste. Man. And then once it transitions into the finish, I'll be it it has a consistent finish to the peak of the mid palate, I would say. So that devil dog cake, that continues. I mean, that just that just lives on. That sensation lives on. The chocolate cake, the icing, the cherry on top, devil dog cake. The finish does then linger on a bit further and I get more of an apple sensation, but I also want to combine it with like a rock candy sweetness. So there's like apple flavored rock candy. I'm going to go with that. Now notice how I combine both those things to bring out the flavor note. Whereas the devil dog cake, I'm saying, Hey, it's just devil dog cake. The other thing I get on the finish too. So everything I just said doesn't hint at a, toasted or double oaked product. Maybe I'm leaning into the chocolates there. On the very tail end of the finish, I do start getting a sliced uh, flaked coconut sensation again. So the coconut does come back. Got that on the nose. That's coming back on the tail end of the finish. Coconut shavings combined with chocolate icing. 
Oh, gosh, that's good pour. All right, one more sip. Let's get into the scores. Oh, I said I was going to keep this short. We're 10 minutes in. Crap. That's when you know I'm excited. So getting into the scores here on the channel, we break things down into a three-tier scoring system. We got flavor. We got experience. We got value. And, man, it just brought it each step of the way. 80 on flavor, 82 on experience, 80 on value. We'll get into that in a second. The overall score is an 81, which is a very good score. And for context, this would rank as the fifth highest score I have given this year on anything that I bought in 2023. So this is in my top five right now. Just putting that context out there as of, you know, the end of March 2023. Oh, that finish. I feel like I could have given it some more points on the flavor. The flavor hit me in a weird spot because I, the nose is nuanced. I enjoyed breaking it down more than I enjoyed the flavors maybe. And then it's very subtle up front as well. So it brings all of its power mid palate into the finish. And that's what really held up that flavor score too. So Man, I feel like I could have given it a few more points here and there. I really debated hard with the score, but was happy with the 81 at the end. Recommend giving it a 7 out of 10. So this is, I'm still tasting this finish, by the way. It's the chocolate icing. This uh, product here, you know, it's $100. This is an expensive pour. It's the same issue that I had with the first one when you're looking at a $100 product. But one of the things I also say within our form is like, how much would you pay for this? And I was like, well, I pay $100 and I pay $100 again. It's really good. So the fact that I gave it a seven out of 10, I think is because of two factors, A, the price and the nuance that I'm talking about here. Like this is a pour that I feel like you can sit down, you can pick apart, you can have fun with, but if you're not interested in sitting down, picking it apart, having fun with, are you going to spend a hundred bucks on it? So that's the point of the seven out of 10. I think there's an audience for this one. If you are into Dix and Deadman products in general, I we're going to do a comparison here, even though we're running a little later than usual. I am going to do the Phoenix blend comparison. I haven't done that yet. I think this one's better though. Oh man. And I like the other one too. So do I plan to buy another? Yes, I do. And I am kind of petrified right now because I am going to record this, post this, and then not be in a position to buy a backup for a week and just pray that I can buy a backup in a week. Like It's like one of those pours that you take that sip out of and you're like, oh, crap, should have bought two. <sighs> Live and learn. So... Let's hang out for two more minutes. I will make this quick. I do want to do a comparison to batch one. I do feel like this is a more impressive product than batch one. And I was a big fan of batch one. Now where batch one, I did not have the instinct to buy a backup. I didn't regret paying a hundred for it. I really enjoyed it. I did not buy a backup. And this one, Paid 100 for it. I drank it and I was like, crap, I can't get back to buy a backup yet. So that in itself kind of exposes my impressions of this bottle thus far. So we're going to get into the Phoenix. I do like the Phoenix label. I mean, the innkeeper label is cool. And I know it's that one's got sentimental value for his story, but man, that Phoenix blend label is pretty hot. All right, let's get into this. So this will just be a quick comparison, but I do want to see what the Phoenix had compared to this innkeepers one, but man, the innkeepers. Incomparable on the nose, the innkeepers. Oh man. This comes off as a more, now I'm doing them back to back like this.
there's just not the nuance there in the same way. So this one, the one in my right hand, I could pick apart for a half hour. I mean, I, I did pick it apart for a half hour on just the nose. Whereas this one is just a more stereotypical double oak product. Hmm. All right. In for the taste on the Phoenix blend. Ooh, that's good too. That's good in different ways. It's softer. It's brighter. Man, it, it, Comes across as more of a toasted product. Oh, it just doesn't have the depth of the gear that the innkeepers has. Let me go in for another innkeepers here. Oh, man. The innkeepers just has so much more fruit. The chocolate notes. Oh, doing them back to back. I'm actually getting more of the tobacco off the taste. I called that on the nose. That's the first time I got it off the palate there. Oh, man. Innkeeper's really good. Going back into the Phoenix. Brighter. Lots of apple. Lots of toasted marshmallow. Man, it's it's good. It is not the innkeepers. Wow. So there we go. There are my thoughts on that one. Innkeepers blend in my top five thus far this year. Ooh, man, that's good. All right. One more sip and then I'll say goodbye to everybody. Man. Maybe I should have graded that higher. I can't imagine it graded it higher than the proprietor, though. That 81 is probably a good score. Oh, it's really good, though. So those are my thoughts on the, oh, the finish. The 2XO Innkeepers Blend. I enjoy this one quite a bit. This one clearly tickles my fancy. So take that as you will if you can get your hands on this one. I am recommending it. At a hundred dollars, and I will keep you posted on how it continues to trend. If it in my top five and it's in my top, kind of need to go back and get a backup, and that will conclude my thoughts. Thanks for joining me today, whiskey friends. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Jeff, just be friends with me, but you have these whiskey friends. And you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you should just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends. And you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you should just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends.